In this video, we're gonna be shooting with the Sony A7CR. I'm very excited to finally have it in my hands. We're gonna be shooting with the 35 millimeter 1.8. We're gonna see how this camera performs today. Luckily, the weather is very nice. I would have liked a few more clouds, but I can't complain. It's a nice fall day. We've got about an hour until the sunset, so we're gonna walk around, take some photos, then we're gonna talk about my thoughts and how I feel about this camera so far. This has become one of my favorite new spots to photograph around Winston. I just recently discovered this and apparently they're gonna be tearing down this warehouse to build apartment buildings. So I've been trying to capture as many photos of this spot while I can before they do tear it down. I wanted to get the yellow garage in the shot, but I don't think it's really gonna work if I wanna capture the skyline of the city in the background as much as I, uh, as much as I did. But it's still a really cool shot. I love the overgrown, torn up parking lot here. Uh, it's a very, very cool shot. Very peaceful, very peaceful out here too. All right, there's one last shot of the city I want to get. I'm gonna grab that before the sun completely sets. I'm actually a little late to getting the shot. I wanted to get it while the sun was still up, while it was uh, still golden hour. It's basically blue hour at this point, so I'm gonna rush and get one last shot, and then we're gonna wrap up. And it might be too dark to talk about my first impressions of this camera so far, so we might just have to head back to the studio and do that. I wish I had my, uh, my glimmer glass filter on for this, but that's okay. Let's get the manhole in here. And we've made it back to the car, thus making it to the final shot of the day. I missed golden hour because it takes a long time to film these videos because taking the photos and setting up the video shots makes everything take twice as long. But uh, maybe in editing, I can warm this up and make this shot look a bit more, bit more golden hour-ish. And with that, I am done shooting for the day. It is getting pretty dark, so we'll head back to the studio and talk about what I think about this camera so far. 
It is now the next day and I've gone through and edited all of the photos that I shot in Lightroom. And the first thing I will say is I forgot just how much I love having a high megapixel sensor. Coming from 24 megapixels in the original A7C going up all the way to 61. It's pretty amazing. I didn't really do any cropping, but zooming in and being able to see all of these details, which would not be clear in the 24 megapixel sensor, it's, it's a huge step up. Does that warrant buying the A7C-R over the A7C-2 for everyone? Probably not, but my next video will be discussing why I picked the A7C-R over the A7C-2. But overall, I'm really enjoying using this camera. The grip does make shooting with this camera a lot more enjoyable. If you have the A7C-R, it's included in the box, but if you have an A7C-2, it's not. It is a little pricey. But I think for a lot of people, the grip would probably be worth getting, especially if you plan on using a larger lens. Just having that extra little bit of a grip on the camera supporting that larger lens, it helps out a lot and it makes a ton of difference. And the next thing in regard to the photos, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the camera body itself, but it's probably the lens I'm using. I did a comparison recently between the 35 1.8 and the 35 1.4 G Master. And the 35mm 1.8 is definitely starting to show signs of weakness when using a larger megapixel sensor. Some of the details are not as sharp until you stop down to about f4. It's not really noticeable unless you crop in, but regardless if you're just planning on posting to social media or online or even medium sized prints up to like 16 by 20, you're definitely not going to notice. I'm not going to talk about every little detail of this camera. I made a A7C2 first impressions video recently where I compare it to the shooting experience going from the original A7C to the A7C2 and the R because they're basically the same camera besides the sensor. The only thing regarding the A7C-R specifically that I'm not really a big fan of is that they did not include the flip out tilt screen 360 kick flip uh, screen on the Sony A7R5 which is very disappointing honestly because it would have been really nice to be able to pull it out especially for shooting street photography when you're trying to keep a low profile but it's not a big deal i got used to it on the original a7c and if you don't own the a7r5 then it's not really going to make a difference for you anyways because you don't know what you don't know you're missing out on but I'll touch on one thing I did mention in the previous video, and it is the viewfinder. It is so much better than the original A7C. In the previous video, I was a little excited. It's not a thousand times better, it's not a hundred times better. But for me personally, the even bigger quality of life update is the dials on the camera. On the original A7C, the exposure compensation dial was limited to just the exposure compensation. But on this camera, you can program this dial to anything you want just like uh, the A7 IV and the A7R5. So it's nice finally being able to adjust my shutter speed on the back, ISO up top, and I have my aperture on the front as well, which is especially convenient with this lens. And one last thing I want to touch on in regards to the photos themselves. A lot of people talk about how 61 megapixels does not have as much dynamic range or you're not able to pull detail out of the shadows as well as you can on a lower megapixel sensor. And I did not really encounter that much of a difference when editing these photos. Is it noticeable in some areas? Maybe a little bit, but not really enough to detract from the larger sensor. A lot of the photos I shot were shot at about 1 50th, 1 40th of a second because I did not want to crank up the ISO too much. A lot of the photos are still attack sharp, so I guess that just goes to show just how good the in-body image stabilization is in this camera. Now, a question a lot of people have been asking me is if I'm planning on selling my original A7C. And as of right now, I'm not planning on selling this camera. I would like to still keep it for a couple reasons. The main one being is this camera did help me build this YouTube channel, so I do have some sentimental attachment to it. And secondly, this camera will probably just become an everyday carry camera for me when I don't feel like carrying around my A7CR. And I think that's pretty much all I have to say about this camera right now. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to help support me so I can continue growing and reaching a larger audience. And I hope I can inspire you guys to get out and take more photos. Go out and shoot.